Well, hello there. Over the last year or so, I've been doing a lot of work using these things, which are digital video recorders for FPV drones, and getting them to work with old camcorders like the one you're watching on right now. Out of all the options I've tested so far, there's been a clear winner, and that's the Immersion RC Powerplay. I've done a few videos on this already, but the information is all spread out all over the place. So I get a lot of DMs asking me, will it work with this, will it work with that? So I just wanted to make a clear, up-to-date guide with everything you could possibly need to know about the Powerplay. And that's this video. You're watching it right now. So, why would you want to do this? It's all about getting that classic skate video aesthetic, so your next video can look like Baker 3 and not a polished Red Bull commercial. Especially when you whack a big old fish eye on there, it's a distinctive look that's really hard to fake. Tapes are getting harder and harder to come by, and therefore they're getting more and more expensive. And Fireware recorders are in the same boat. They cost loads, and that's if you can even find one in the first place. The Powerplay costs about 70 quid and records onto micro SD cards in great quality. Yeah, it's not quite as good as using a Firewire, but I think you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference, especially once it's uploaded to YouTube. In fact, let's try that now. Which one do you reckon's the Powerplay, A or B? Let me know in the comments. What cameras does it work with? Basically, as long as you've got an AV out, you're all good. On my two cameras, the TRV900 and GL2, it's a 3.5mm jack, the same as you'd find on a pair of headphones. But the VX1000 and many others have the red, white and yellow RCA jacks. They usually say AV or audio video next to them, and if your camera's got one, then you're good to go. What about broken cameras? If your camera turns on and stays turned on, with video displaying in the LCD or viewfinder, there's a good chance you'll be fine. The tape heads are the cause of 90% of problems on these old cameras. And since we're not using the tape deck, you can get away with a slightly faulty camcorder. My TRV900 was sold to me with glitchy audio, so I got a right bargain. I took a punt betting it'd be the tape heads, and luckily it was. Sounds great, looks great, absolutely love this thing. What do I need to get up and running? I'll link everything below as usual. First you need the power play itself, obviously. It doesn't come with batteries, so you'll need to pick up two 18500 batteries. You won't need a charger as you can just use the USB-C port on the power play to charge them up. Be careful what charger you use though. Maxwell Lee's left a comment saying he tried to charge with a MacBook charger and blew up his batteries. Your PC or laptop's USB ports are a safe bet, but I wouldn't go plugging this thing into a smartphone fast charger. My housing is modded to fit 18650 batteries, but you don't need to worry about that. The 18500s work great, I just like tinkering, and these are the batteries I had. You'll need a micro SD card. You'll be fine with pretty much anyone you like. I use a 32GB SanDisk and you can store boatloads of footage on that. Depending on your camera, you might need to pick up an extra AV cable. For cameras like the GL2 and TRV900, you can use one of the included cables that comes in the box. I chopped off the extra connectors with scissors and just left the 3.5mm jack, as they're the only ones we need. The others are for powering drone goggles, so don't worry about them. For VX users, you just need a 3.5mm to RCA cable. Finally, you just need a way to mount the DVR to your camera. There's a bunch of DIY options, a few people have used 3M sticky pads or glued something onto the included mounts. Some phone clamps work okay too. I sell 3D printed mounting kits on my website, 3ccd.biz, so if you want something custom made for this application, I've got you covered. One thing that's changed since I last showed the kit is that I added this metal quarter 20 to hot shoe adapter in every kit. As it turns out, some hot shoes are much deeper than others, like this thick boy on the TRV900. Now it's safely compatible with every camera. There's one big issue that we haven't covered yet, and that's that the power play only records correctly when the AV jack is pushed about two thirds of the way in. My solution to this is a 3D printed spacer secured with a cable tie. This is included with my mounting kit, but I also sell the spacers separately if you want them on their own. I'm certain that there's cables that will work when being inserted all the way, but I haven't found them yet. I did manage to solder my own custom cable, but it was a hell of a lot of work, and the spacer works just as well. For now, I reckon that's the best option. To use the power play, plug everything in, 
turn on your camera and long press the green button to turn on the power play. To start recording, you press in the jog wheel. The camera stays in standby mode the whole time, so you might have to fiddle with some settings to stop it from turning off automatically. This of course will vary between models, so have a Google or dig out the manual, but you'll definitely want to run it without a tape, as if there's a tape in the deck, this can cause some models to turn off after a time limit. Short pressing the green button opens up a menu that will allow you to view your clips or format the SD card, as well as some other less useful bits. You just use the jog wheel to go through the options and push it in to select. The footage from the power play uses square pixels, whereas real DV footage uses a slightly different ratio. In practice it's not super noticeable, but it's a nice easy fix in Premiere. I'm sure there's a similar process in other editors too, but this is the only one I use. All you have to do is import your power play footage, highlight the clips in the project window, right click on one of them, modify, interpret footage, then change from square pixels to D1 slash DV in either PAL or NTSC depending on your camera. If you're over in the US it'll be NTSC, here in Europe it's most likely PAL. Everywhere else I don't have a clue. Export settings could be a whole video in itself, but this particular one you're watching was exported at 1440 by 1080 for HD 4x3. It was encoded in H.264 with 25 megabits per second bitrate. Hopefully it's looking crispy. And I think that about covers it. If you've got any further questions, leave them in the comments. I try to get back to as many people as possible. Hit subscribe so you don't miss future updates and I'll catch you in the next one. Toodles. <laughs>